now. <laughs> now Brian's gonna plant me some trees. I have no idea what I'm doing. When we last rented an excavator to dig the trench line for the solar power system conduit, we ended up paying for one day's rental, but keeping it for four days because of when they could come back and pick it up. Winning! So once all the solar power system excavation work was done, we set to work getting the land ready for tree planting. Originally, based on the rocky terrain we experienced where the solar mounts are going to be, we assumed we'd need an excavator to dig deep enough to plant trees. We even bought topsoil and compost to replace all the rock we anticipated removing. Oh, how wrong we were. Gamble's Oak. And then my favorite one is this one though. <laughs> Forget what it's called. Autumn Blaze Maple. Oh, maple? Mm-hmm. You build a guitar out of this. No. Here it's like very easy to dig. On this side it's a, it's it's incredible. Oh my gosh, it's so easy. Yeah. Look at like, this dirt. It's just dirt. Yeah, it's just dirt. It's just dirt. So there's some rocks here. Just dirt. Couple rocks, but not like last time. I mean, I could probably, I haven't, we didn't dig like 30, 40 inches deep. No. Um, but I think we could have. Um, and then we, um, plant some Chelsea, trees. Yeah, Chelsea wanted to plant some trees, so we did that. These are the non fruiting trees, so they're gonna be by, they're gonna be by the house. So eventually, when we walk out, like on our deck, we'll have trees. But, they maple. technically should be on the other side if they were gonna be windbreak trees, but that's like where our driveway is and RVs and stuff, so we can't plant anything over there yet. Not but yet, but we will. Yeah. Yeah. When things are more settled. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so. we got a maple, we have two Colorado spruce, and then two Gambles oak. So, got our little, little forest going. Yeah. Gotta water them though. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fun. <laughs> gotta water, I gotta <laughs> spread cover crops, probably the clover I think I'm gonna do here. And then I need to put hay or something on top of that. And then just water until it gets cold and then when the ground freezes, they basically go dormant for the winter, so. Bye tree, we'll come back and water you in a bit. It's planting day. <laughs> We're actually not planting that much. We are planning and preparing to plant things. So we're going to dig, or Brian's going to with the excavator, dig a retention pond over here so that we can have space for our orchard around it and it will have better water access than it would um, up there closer <laughs> to where the house is, which is a little unfortunate because ideally you'd want everything you're growing to be within a reasonable range, but the top of the hill is not ideal for planting things. At least things that are gonna go into the ground. But that's okay, because once it's established, it won't need as much uh, attention and things like that. So today we're gonna get started with the retention pond. We're gonna dig some swales to help catch the runoff water as well when it rains. And yeah, and then we have a couple trees to plant. So should be good. Okay, so I've set the perimeter of the pond. Brian is digging that now. Well, he does that because it's going to take a little bit. There's a lot of dirt to move. I'm going to go ahead and measure where the swales are going to be around it. The idea of the swales is that you dig down a little bit in the ground so that the water, the runoff water down our hill gets stuck there. And then the dirt from that, you build a berm on the downward slope of it to really help keep the water from just like running down and taking nutrients and soil with it. 
And it's just like multiple ways to stop the water from just rushing down the hill, taking soil, taking nutrients, taking plants, and letting the water soak into the ground and recharge the aquifer. We don't get a ton of rain here, <laughs> it's just high desert. So really like any techniques we can do to keep water where we're gonna put the plants is going to be immensely helpful because then we're just not gonna have to like bring hoses down to water all the time, especially in the summer. There's a lot of sun and it does get a little warm. It's a lot of earth to move today. A lot of earth moving projects lately. Good times. starting to look like a pond. Just kidding, it looks like a big hole with a bunch of dirt. One day it'll look like a pond though. All right, Brian is starting the swales. So these will be one foot deep, about a foot wide. Basically I told him however wide the bucket is on the excavator, and it's gonna be 26 feet long. It's 26 feet long because of the spacing between the trees that are required, which is about like 12 to 16 feet. So we'll get basically like one or two trees in each swale, and then we'll interplant with things like blueberries, gooseberries, currants, and raspberries. We've got a couple of different ones. I think we have six or seven of the swales planned, and that's just to start. <laughs> Ideally, we'd have multiple ponds and like excessive amount of trees, but this is just a start. So as you can see, it's about a foot down, maybe a smidge more, about a foot wide, maybe a smidge more. What I'm gonna do now is compact all of this dirt that was dug out to make a berm, and then we'll figure out where to plant the trees after that. It's always different to like see something in a book and then try and apply it in real life because you read about it and you're like, yeah, I could totally do that. <laughs> and then you try and do it in person, you're like, wow, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I imagine this is how Brian probably feels with a lot of the like utility stuff and designing our house. Um, I have complete and like total confidence in what he's able to do. So I never really like think about it. But when it comes to these kind of projects, which are more in my domain, I'm like, oh, this is like something I'm totally unsure about. And that's where some of the excitement comes from. But also, I'm like really nervous. I think everyone that I've seen looks so nice and I don't know how they do it. I mean, maybe they are using an excavator, but it all looks really smooth and I don't know. I was just kind of planning on like tamping it a little bit and then like throwing some seeds on it because if we could get plants over it, it'll lock the soil in so that the berms don't erode. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's been a rough day. This morning, we were trying to train Kona to be off leash and it turned out we had changed the channel on her remote because we got her like a vibrating collar. It's a shock collar, but we don't really use the shock. So it just makes a sound or it vibrates and startles her to like get her to pay attention to us. And it was on a different channel. So she just started running towards some cows and we couldn't figure out why the remote wasn't working. So luckily Brian hopped in the truck and then I just started running because I wanted to make sure I could see which way she was going to tell him where to go because she just freaking goes so fast. And uh, one thing led to another and I tripped on a rock, twisted my ankle, fell down a hill, <laughs> and then kept running up another hill to follow her. Uh, so she's fine, Brian caught her luckily, but then, you know. <sighs> yeah, so I just walked up a hill on a twisted ankle and now I'm doing this, so whatever, it's fine. Just not a like really strong positive way to start the day. So. It looks like all we did was make a bunch of big holes in the ground. Isn't that what we did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was literally the point. <laughs> But it sounds so like technical when you're like, we're building swales and berms and permaculture. And it's like, all you did was make a big hole in the ground. 
I just wish that this dirt was a bed. Yeah. Not all of those rocks, because um, that'd be really nice. Yeah, this is like really nice soil. <laughs> if we were, <laughs> if solar did wasn't, like the directions wasn't that important, I would seriously consider just moving everything down here. Oh, but, yeah. but because we need everything on the south side, um, this hill will be covered for a big chunk a bigger chunk than way up there, so. And it would know. be a very long trench to the house. It would be a long trench. Yeah. We could do it. We could do it. But we're already done. But we're not stuff. going to. <laughs> it's still gonna be, it, it, honestly, it would still be easier probably to get an auger and then do it. <laughs> but we're gonna do it that way. We'll stick to it. Yeah. Is this everything you hoped it would be, Jazz? No, because we didn't go anywhere. It's a big jump. It's too big for small doggos. There you go. Jazz demanded to come. Now that we're here, I guarantee she's going to just try and leave. She's going to hike back up. So according to the tentative plan that I drew up, the other day. All of the fruit trees I got now for planting are going to be planted on the most downhill berm. So that'll keep things easy. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually just plant the trees in those mounds of dirt that were dug up from the swales. So it'll keep things nice and simple for me. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of this composted manure I picked up from the local hardware store. And then I'm going to determine what cover crop I want to plant over the berms. The choice is either white, cloud, crimson clover, perennial lupine, or alfalfa. I don't think I'm going to plant my mountain wildflower mix until the spring because I really want those to come in and the other ones are a little bit of an experiment if they'll survive overwintering here in such a harsh climate. And then I think uh, later today we'll uh, bring the cistern down and we'll give them a good soaking and we'll call it a day on this phase one of our orchard. Time to plant them. Man, these are not like the biggest or most beautiful trees, but it's already helping it look less just like a bunch of a pile of dirt. So these are my seeds. I have zero experience with any of these plants, which is exciting. The lupine I know grows around here. We already have it on our property. I've seen some red clover, not a white variety, um, so that's good. And then the alfalfa is like <laughs> totally an experiment, I have no idea. So I might actually just do kind of like a blend of all of them <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Is this how you plant? I have no idea. That's how we're going to plant. Alright, time for some clover. or something because look at my hand <laughs> like why is my hand sore <laughs> ah, that's funny got some clover and alfalfa on all the berms which is cool um i decided to hold off on the lupine because it said you were actually supposed to bury it and <laughs> i'm feeling so tired and lazy today so i went with the two varieties uh the alfalfa and the clover that you can just broadcast seed aka like kind of just throw on the ground like i did it was fun though it's fun planting seeds good luck little people please grow 